Now, I imagine you know where the North Pole is, or at least you think you know where the North Pole is. Did you know, in fact, it has been moving and changed direction since the turn of the century? Well, I am, of course, talking about the magnetic north, not the geographic one. But that magnetic north does impact our GPS systems, compasses, and its movements could be driven by drought. Well, to find out a bit more, we can cross live to Dr. William Brown, who works exactly on uh, locating our magnetic field and following its movements. Uh, Dr. Brown, thanks so much for your time. Firstly, can I start actually with that question, you know, about what exactly it is, this magnetic North Pole? And there was a lot of articles this time last year uh, alarming us that it was moving more rapidly and changing direction. But hasn't it always moved? Tell us a bit, what exactly is it and why is it important? Uh, yes, so you're right, it has always moved. Uh, the magnetic North Pole uh, and as well as the magnetic South Pole uh, points at the Earth where the Earth's magnetic field is vertical, so it goes directly down into or out of the surface. Uh, and that's a somewhat arbitrary point that we use. The thing that is useful for us is that if you were to use, say, a compass, it's the point towards which your compass would point. Um, and that's what separates it from, say, the geographic pole, which is the point at the top of the Earth that the Earth rotates around. Uh, and yes, the, uh, the North Pole has always moved, uh, as far as we are aware, uh, and that's because of the very dynamic nature in which the Earth's magnetic field is generated. So it's generated within the Earth's core. This is a ball of uh, molten iron about 7,000 kilometers across, and the iron is in a liquid state because it's very hot at the center of the Earth, and as it flows around, it uh, conducts electricity and these moving currents generate a magnetic field in what's called a dynamo or a geodynamo at the center of the Earth. It's much like uh, what you'd use to power your bike lights if you have them hooked up to the motion of the wheel. You have moving electrical currents and they generate magnetic fields from that. But can I ask you, because it has always moved, but it seems to have started to speed up perhaps, and then it changed from heading in the direction to, of Canada towards changing to Siberia. Now you have said uh, that the movement is generated by the Earth's core, which is thousands of kilometers under our feet. But you know, what impacts it? What, what do you see as the reason for this, uh, this movement and switch in direction? Uh, so yes, it has moved um, since about 1860. It's moved about two and a half thousand kilometers. Um, but in fact, the thing that's been quite interesting is that since the 1990s, it's really sped up very much, as you alluded to. So it's uh, it's gone from moving at around 10 to 15 kilometers a year up until around the 1990s, and then it really sped up to about 50 kilometers a year uh, over that last 30-year period. So that motion, that acceleration. Uh, it's all to do with the way in which the fluid iron in the Earth's core moves. It moves in such a cha uh, chaotic manner. Uh, it's quite unpredictable for us because we're so far away. It's three and a half thousand kilometers below our feet. Uh, and so the only way we have to monitor the motion of that fluid is by looking at the magnetic field that results from it. So we use it as a, as a tracer to try and understand the way the core is moving. Uh, because it moves in a very unpredictable manner, then the pole as well moves in sometimes quite an unpredictable manner. I have read that uh, some scientists believe that a drought here on Earth and the level of water we have across the Earth has a direct impact on this magnetic field. Do you agree with that? How do you see the interrelation between the two? Uh, it's certainly a, a very complicated one. The Earth as a, as a planet, as an entire system, is a very complicated uh, arrangement of many things. Um, the magnetic field itself, the, the part that we're familiar with, the bit that gives us our poles, comes from uh, inside in the Earth's core. But when we make a measurement of the magnetic field, what we're measuring is not just what the Earth's core is doing. We're measuring the magnetism of the rocks that we're standing on. We're measuring the influence of the sun, which has a hugely powerful magnetic field. Uh, and obviously, it's very different because it shines on one side of the Earth and while the other side is in darkness. So you have very different behaviors through the day even. Um, the magnetic field is constantly changing, and there's uh, much that we do know about it, uh, and also much that we are still trying to understand in terms of the effects of how uh, climate or um, the interaction between the sun and the Earth in what we call space weather, um, how this all uh, how this all interacts with each other, and, and what that means for the measurements we might make of the magnetic field on any, any given day. Uh, now, you, you t said earlier that the impact here on Earth, that, I mean, it might be minor for a lot of us unless we actually head uh, to those poles, but it does impact GPS or uh, compasses because the compass, the, the point of the north will change. Uh, does it also affect then animals that migrate and things like that? Tell us a bit, bit more about the impacts and, you know, how we adapt to that as this magnetic uh, North Pole moves. 
So we do believe that there are various animals that have some kind of sense of the magnetic field, but how exactly they navigate by it uh, is not very clear to us. Um, humans do it, but we do it in quite a complicated manner. Uh, we build instruments like compasses in which to measure the magnetic field, and we understand how to separate the influence of all the different sources of magnetic fields, how to tell what's coming from the Earth's core versus what's coming from the rocks we're standing on or the activity of the, uh, the sun shining on the Earth. Um, it's not clear how animals would do that, but we do understand that they may have some sense of uh, perhaps which way is north or where the field is stronger or weaker. Um, that's still very much a, a difficult question in science to understand how how they uh, they manage that. But yes, um, our, our navigation by compass, uh, you may not get a map and a compass out very regularly, but most people have a smartphone or a GPS system in their car, for example. And while GPS will give you your position, uh, it's often a measurement of the magnetic field made with a, an instrument called a magnetometer inside your phone or inside your car that gives you the direction in which you're facing. Um, and in order to make use of that information, you have to have a reference, not just telling you uh, where your compass, your magnetometer points towards the, the magnetic north pole, for example, but you also have to understand how that relates to where you are geographically. So you have to have a kind of reference map mm. to correct yourself and orientate yourself in the same direction that you want to be facing. Very, very briefly, uh, Dr. Brown, but does the same happen at the South Pole or is it completely different? Uh, it is both the same and different. There is a magnetic South Pole and it does also move, but it is not tied to the North Pole in a sense that they can move independently of each other. And while the North Pole has moved very quickly and quite a long way in the last few hundred years, the South Pole has not. It's actually been relatively static. Okay, fascinating stuff. Dr. Brown, thanks so much for joining us live and uh, giving us your insight into that magnetic uh, North Pole opening uh, worlds for those of us that don't follow all these movements. Dr. Brown, they're coming to us live. Okay, if you're just joining us, these are our top stories.